Welcome everybody. It's Yo Town. It's Go Town. It's Go Time. Today is the first Thursday of the rest of your life, in case you didn't know that. And no, that doesn't always apply, believe it or not, once you think into that. Hashtag wisdom. Hashtag Twitter. Hashtag follow me. Alright, we have a dragon here. A mainline dragon against a Fide Master. I was waiting to get an opponent here for a while. And finally found a taker here. A strong player. A little lower rated than me a bullet, but that doesn't really matter in a lot of cases, so let's just try to play our best and not think ahead. Not think ahead meaning meaning don't get ahead of yourself. That we should always be thinking ahead. Mark of a chess player, right? Well, this should be fun. Hope you've enjoying the new action we've been bringing you here on our YouTube channel. And right now I have extended this G5 idea. The main reason we extend the G5 idea in the Nine Castles Long Dragon is because in a lot of these situations, you want to avoid black being able to play F5 and dislodging this pony. White wants to maintain the grip as far as the uh, light squares go. This is the main point. And I'm not sure what I should do here. I guess I'm going to put the bishop on d6. I'm not even sure I was a huge fan of that move myself. I'm not a huge fan of the move I just played. But uh, hey, I did it. It's over. It's done with. Did it over, done with. Now my bishop is sort of self-pinned, right? So I've created a little bit of a mess for myself. Hopefully some time on a tickety will favor me here. I can play knight to c5, which is actually sort of creative. Maybe I should have even played that move last move. But I didn't consider it in time. It was inconceivable. Vincini, you never mess with a, with a Sicilian when death is on the line. Oh, that just hung my queen, and he didn't see it. I probably would have been in a good situation anyway, considering that I established a 15-second time advantage, which, unless you've blundered away the game, is probably worthy of a piece when it comes to bullet. So let's run this thing back against Fide Master Andy Russia. Andy Russia, what is, what is going on here? He gave me another pawn to take, and I didn't do it. Probably should have done it. The smith Moore Gambit, one of the most popular openings for white to play, again, in bullet especially. Definitely gets a lot of activity for white, easy positions to play and develop into. So an all-around winner, right? There's my slogan. There's my slogan for the smith Mora. You, too, can be an all-around winner with the smith Mora Gambit, right? That's a little bit better than my movie voice, I think. The movie guy voice that I like to do from time to time. I need to get d4. I'm not really too worried about him taking on g6, even though it cripples the structure. He decides to do it. Mainly because I like the f-file. I've always enjoyed me an f-file. Not sure why. I've always been a little bit of a, a sucker for the f-file. Well, now I'm getting myself in trouble. And more than a little bit of trouble. Could be big time trouble if I'm not careful here. I'm going to double my rooks quickly on the f-file and create some pressure where it counts the most. The hostess with the mostess is going to sacrifice the exchangeist right here. So let's see if I can begin to get some action. Maybe I come back to e8. Not exactly sure. I guess prophylaxis to guard g6 makes sense. But I want to get I want to get jiggy with it. I really want to get jiggy with it on the uh, on the diagonal as well. So I'm not sure of the approach I've taken here on a number of levels, creating some dysfunction in my own camp. And now I've got a situation where I maybe even have to be worried about the e pawn. So not that great for me right now. I'm not feeling too enthused by my own position here trying to play instinctively and keep playing quickly. This is the best we can do under the circumstances. Always the best you can do. Forget the rest. Expect the best. Let's block it. We're just going to give up our queen here. Maybe go for checkmate. This is purely bullet chess right now, kids. This is purely bullet chess. Uh, I have to go here and get out. And hope. Oh, I lost on time. <laughs> Wow, that was pathetic to lose that game. I literally had to work hard to lose that game. I was up so much on time. Almost any of the moves were better. Maybe we could return the favor and play a Smith Mora, but then we think better of it. Right, I am a man of principles. Not many. But those I decide to keep to. Convenient, right? Convenient morals. 
are my favorite kind. Well, that was that was ugly. It's not fun to lose to somebody so much lower rated than you in Bullet. Mainly because you lose a lot of rating points. That's pretty much the reason why it's not that fun. But okay. It is what it is at this point. It's already over. Red Rover style. No point crying over spilled rating points. Chess terminology, turning pop culture into chess terminology since 1985. That's one of my favorite things to do. This position is bad. Now I'm just frustrated with myself from last game. I'm playing terrible. Playing terrible. It's the problem with letting your emotions get the best of you. Also something I've been doing since 1985. I'd tell you my birthday, but, you know, then you know I was a Libra. And then, you know, you know that gets weird, right? We start talking astrology on a chess show. But okay. Oh, that's interesting. Actually a very good move. Actually a very good move by my opponent. And I'm going to give a weird check. And then I'm going to... What can I do? I feel like he's in an awkward mating net. But I don't have anything. I have nothing. I have nothing at best here. Oh, that was a surprise. I didn't expect that coming. In fact, it was a great idea by him to do this. I just got I just got killed two out of three. Wow. Well, we're not going to let this go. Obviously, we're much stronger than this guy in Bullet for a reason. So let's run it back. This is frustrating. Frustrating to lose games like this. Pathetic. Let's see if he wants to play with the Smith Moore one more time. Decides not to, thinking better of it after the terrible position he had, but but I need to I need to put games away instead of losing my focus. Now I'm just I mean, I just I'm embarrassing myself in front of the, the entire YouTube community here. Which is not fun. This is fun. This is what the dragon is all about. This particular move order here usually leads to nothing but tragedy for white. There's a reason why white usually takes on d5 before taking on c6, and it's because of this particular move order trick. So if you back up and take a look at the line, you will know what I'm talking about. I guess I can take with the knight. He can take on g7, takes everything. Eh, I'll take with the pawn. Not as flashy, I know. But taking with the pawn anyway. This time I'm going to try not to blow the massive time advantage I've had in these games. Ugh. Ugh, ugh, ugh. You know. With myself. I'm ugging with myself right now, right? Makes sense. Sounds like a troll when I say that. All right. Well, this is a delicious position to say the least. And now I can take and even go after the dark squares, or I can even shake and bake. I guess I'll take and go after the dark squares. But with time being what it is here, I have a hard time believing that I won't have a, a, fun, a fun time converting this position regardless because of the time. I'll just give my rook to the second rank. Who cares? Rooks to the second rank, opposite cut bishops, white is frozen, black is in good shape even if it wasn't for the bullet. And let's bring this thing to a best of five right here, right now. How now, brown cow? Let's do this thing. Filthy. Put some filthy words back in my mouth. That sounded weird. All right, we have a transposition to a special conflict. If you've seen this move order, the point is that white puts pressure on d6 to induce e5. And wait a second. Yeah, this is correct. Okay. And it all works out for the better in the end. We have transposed into main lines of Zisveshnikov, yeah? F5. Why am I just... I'm completely forgetting my theory right now, which is just insane. Why am I completely forgetting my theory? I don't know. I have absolutely no idea why I'm doing that. Okay. Back on track here. Back on track in some ways. We'll take here and play f6 for funsies. Loves me a good a good tactic in the Sveshnikov. Not even sure it's even always the right idea for white to go for something like this, to be totally honest. But in this case, we did it. 
So once again, let's not worry about it right now. Let's go pick up the D-pawn and get our knight on a3 back in the game. One of the biggest issues you have in a Sveshnikov. He plays knight there. Can I just play a 4? Yeah, I'll just play a 4. Who knows, I'm not sure I can, but I'm going to do it. I'll let him take on b2. Come over and attack. And maybe continue my attack. I'd like to play f6. Well, we'd all like a toilet made out of gold, wouldn't we, Danny? <laughs> yes, we would. Okay, well... Oh, that's not right. That's not even very good for him, yeah? We'll push it. Do it. Attack it. Get it. Right, in it. In it on the telly. Yeah, right, on telly. All right, now we're going to go checkmate him. He's going to give a couple checks. Oh, he mouse slipped. <laughs> I expected him to give a couple checks, but he didn't. Okay, well, we'll stop it there. I, I feel like, and it's no disrespect to my FIDE Master opponent, that this probably shouldn't have gone this far, considering I usually would have won that second game and probably ended it. But look at all of you. All of you get to see a treat here. What was it going to be a 2-0 turned into a best of five? But we'll call it today for this week's Bullet Brawl. You can follow me on Twitter. You can join chess.com. You too can be awesome. See you around, kids.